Well, so far we've looked at avoidance and uh, shutdown, but um, when uh, none of these work and um, they go into the storm. Now, this is called meltdown or fragmentation, um, but properly it should be known as an autonomic storm. Autonomic. Autonomic because it's the autonomic nervous system mm -hmm. basically blowing its fuses. Mm -hmm. And the part of the autonomic system which is blowing its fuses is the, is the sympathetic nervous system. Right. So this is, and that's what they're measuring. Okay, so in these mittens, in the mittens that, that's, that's at Birmingham what, University, that's what they were me measuring. That's what they were measuring. Right, okay. Um, this rise in activity of the sympathetic nervous system. And really, you know, if you say it blows its fuses, mm. people pr pretty well understand what mm. you mean. Mm. Um, all the, the <laughs> and all the things we'd do if we'd had a panic attack. Yes. Um, but it's also associated with very great pain. Yeah. Now, I think that actually an awful lot of these evasive exit strategies are trying to get out of going into the autonomic yes. storm. It's not so much um, the autonomic storm is part of the evasive strategies. That's what happens if the, if the exit strategies don't work. Yes. Or the so I'm doing period. everything I can to I'm prevent myself going everything. into that state. So I will bang my head to stop myself, yeah. um, uh, to distract myself. Or I'll thump you to get you to go away. Yes. Or I'll simply close down completely. What we've done is we've um, triggered the body's self-defense systems. Yeah. Because if I was a, a, there was a large snake here, um, I would run away yes. or hit it. Yes. Or um, uh, freeze. Freeze, exactly, freeze. yes. Mm. And so those are the three reactions of the body self-defense system. Mm. So what we're trying to do is to lower the sensory input so that we don't go into triggering the yeah. body self -sense. Because if we trigger, if, if the person finds himself in a state of the autonomic, autonomic storm, that can be utterly overpowering. I've, I've read Donna Williams describing yeah, absolutely it terrifying. As, as a near-death experience. Yes, it's, absolutely that's terrifying. Mm. You know, mm. as I said before, it's like having your head in a car crusher. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's horrific. The, the, the descriptions of it are absolutely horrific. So, so physically, what somebody might be experiencing in that moment of, of panic, of real yeah. horrible fragmentation, might be what? You talked about a panic attack, but what might somebody actually be well, experiencing? Well, um, heart rate increasing, mm -hmm. uh, change in colour, the capillaries um, alter size. Um, so they'd be feeling heat. Heat. Yes. Um, uh, stomach churning. Yeah. Um, breath breath rate. Yeah. Uh, increasing. All things that we do if we're getting, our body is preparing to mm -hmm. um, get out of the situation. Yes. Yeah. Um, not very effectively, mm -hmm. in fact. Mm -hmm. And it is associated with confusion, heat, and sweating. Okay. So um, people's ability to think straight in that moment will desert them. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they, they're not there, basically. Yeah. They're overwhelmed by their, mm -hmm. their sensory mm -hmm. um, dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So trying to reason them out of it is... is, is well, the one thing you mustn't do if a person, even from the beginning, if a person is beginning to... Um, if you've noted the, the sort of signs that they're going to blow, mm -hmm. don't talk to them because... Zip that, it. Zip it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because they are um, even putting in speech. Yeah is going to be more to process, so they're going to go over quicker. Okay. So rather than talking, we zip this and we use their language as much as possible. Absolutely. If their language is a really heavy squeeze to the upper arm, that's what I will do. Yes. Because that is going to be the... I remember um, talking to a, a lad and his mum said, come and say hello to Phoebe. Come on, how do you do? Mm -hmm. And uh, he... Um, took my hand like that very graciously and he digged his finger <laughs> really hard into the back of my yeah. um, hand. And instead of um, a sort of squeaking and whatever, what I did was very firmly yeah. touched his hand. Yes. So I'm confirming yeah. he, how he feels and backing off. And then again, people, there's an awful lot of complaints about, oh, he wants to hug me all mm, the time. Mm. Um, what you have to do is when you first see them, Go straight up to them, give them a big hug mm -hmm. and release them immediately and back off. Mm -hmm. Because you've confirmed them before they've got into the bit of 
I need to have this person, yeah. I need to have this person, I need to have yeah. this person. And, and if you are a care worker in an organisation which has some real clear guidelines about touch, what you might need to do instead of a full frontal hug is a really side to side deep hug. So yeah. Yeah. you've got to you give them real pr- pressure. Yes. You've yeah. got to work around. But if, on the other hand, you've got um, uh, organisations which are saying no touch, mm-hmm. then they are actually wrong. Mm. Um, because if you've got a person who is low on pressure, and we'll talk about this in a minute, yeah. um, it's like saying, oh, well, I'll just put you in a cupboard and lock yes. the door. Yeah. Um, because that person needs uh, pressure in order to confirm them yes. before they can move on. Yes. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking from the point of view of a care worker who knows that what you're saying is right, but also knows they might get in trouble if they do that. So there's a two-pronged attack here, isn't there? There's this care worker working within the organisation to say, we need to look at this person's needs separately. And there's a care worker also thinking, how can I practically give this person the pressure that, pressure they, need. that they need yeah. um, without putting myself or this person in danger? So yes. I might be looking at different ways of, of providing that proprioceptive input, like the sideways squeeze, yeah. like using a big gym ball to, to press yeah. against somebody. It's, it's a real dilemma, I think, for it some is, people at the front is, line. Indeed. There's a particularly good um, uh, simulation uh, by a woman with autism um, on YouTube, among a number of other ones. But this one, she says, my brain's like a dial-up modem. Um, uh, if you put too much data in, the brain will crash. Mm-hmm. And that is precisely what's happening uh, in uh, the brain of a child or adult with autism. If you put too much data in, too much stimulation, the brain will crash. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens. Oh shit, what are we gonna do now? 